what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be looking at the second offering from Devo Knives. Now, the stout was an amazing, amazing success. I've got mine. A lot of you that uh, that did your pre-order have already got yours. You've received them. There's been a lot of great feedback. And I got to tell you, for the very first knife that they've ever made, they knocked that one out of the park. And this one, I really thought they were going to go back to the well and they were going to do the same thing that they did last time. Nope. They did something quite surprising. Number one, they did a liner lock. So you've got the same look on both sides of the knife. Number two, it's not... It's what we used to call a front flipper, but now is more commonly referred to as a top flipper. Because, you know, we see front flippers as having a very large, awkward, weird tab coming off the back side of the blade that goes up outside of the, the handle. And what has normally been called a top flipper has the jimped flipper tab going around the top of the knife. Oh, and that is my preferred method. Me method? Yeah, that's my preferred method. If, if you're going to make a front flipper, do it this way. This is the way the South Africans have always done it, and it works great. It doesn't detract away from the design when the knife is closed. It doesn't look clunky and weird and shit hanging off the front of your knife. And it's easier, especially for somebody like me that doesn't do front flippers very often, you can 100% get deployment. Every time I hit that, it will deploy. Unlike a lot of front flippers, why I may have to struggle to get the right angle and pressures and this and that, this works great. And of course... You've got that large blade window there that allows you to reverse spidey flick it. You can slow roll it. You can, I think you can flick it. Yep, you can flick it with your thumb. So I think that this follow-up, this sophomore effort, if you will, is going to be a great success. Let's get down to the tabletop and get into this and see why I think this might even actually be more popular than the stout was. Hey guys, Kev here! Well, wait, what the shit? Where the hell did that come from? Oh, man, that sent chills down my spine. Welcome in, everybody. Jim here. We're going to be taking a look at the second offering from Devo Knives. For those of you that may have missed their first design, that was the Stout. And it has quickly, very quickly, become one of my most carried and most actually used knives. I love this knife. It's a fantastic cutter. It's a shitload of fun. It's a good flicker. It's a good fun knife just to kind of fuck around with. But today, we're going to get into something that I feel is a little bit more unique. Actually, I can't even say that because it looks a little bit more traditional in its overall shape than this crazy Toucan Sand Blade, which I love very, very much. This is going to probably, um, if, if I had to guess, I think this is going to resonate with more of the general population, even though it is still a bit unique in the way that it's been made. Let's take a quick look and see what's going on inside here. This is the Devo Knives Buzz. The pre-order date is going to be October 15th at, a, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I almost said 11. 
October 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern. So don't miss that. I would have had you guys there 10 hours late and it would have been a it would have been a catastrophe. The prices are going to be $299 to $320. Very low price point for the knife that you're going to be receiving. I think that you're going to be very, very impressed with the price paid versus the product in your hand. Now, this is, uh, as I mentioned, Kevin Collins' second design. They knocked it out of the park with the stout. Not only did they sell out very, very quickly, but now that they're in customers' hands, it's had really, really great feedback. So I think you're going to be very happy. Now, this one is uh, actually being manufactured by Best Tech Knives. So here is the packaging. Very familiar if you have a stout in your collection. This is the same uh, box and pouch. And uh, once again, I'm very thankful for uh, being able to add another jizz rag to my collection. So thank you, Kev. I appreciate that. Very, very thoughtful. It's after some point, they just get too crusty and you got to replace them. And here is that really, really, I mean, it's such a handsome look in this leather pouch. Sure, a pouch is a pouch, yeah, right? Whatever. Most of them are, are, are uh, nylon canvas or something like that. Some are zippered, some are Velcro. I like this one. It's got kind of an old school, old world kind of feel to it. Really nice feel to it. Uh, and it's got a metal zipper, which is kind of kind of crazy done in this, uh, this brass finish. I know I shouldn't be going so nuts over packaging, but uh, I think it's pretty damn cool. And inside of the 70s porn uh, velvet painting uh, interior is going to be your knife. Now you're going to notice a couple things that are wildly different about this knife. Number one is the way the front flipper is set up. Instead of having a crazy ass spike stick it up out of the, the top of your damn knife, which I really am not a fan of, you've got this nicely jimped, rounded section. It's just a little bit of tang off the blade. It's non-obtrusive. It follows the shape and flow of the design. So uh, I think it was a really, really, really great choice. Plus for me, as a person that traditionally does not front flip and, and despises front flippers in, in pretty much uh, every way that they're made, this is the way that I can 100% every time flick that thing and it's gonna open. The other unique thing is the sound that this knife makes. Now, listen carefully. I'm not sure if it's going to pick up on camera, but if you listen carefully, you're going to hear something uh, that comes out of this knife every time you open it that I've never really heard anything else. You know, we've talked about the harmonics of the uh, incredible Winter Blade Factor and a few other knives that have popped up on the market in the past year or two. But this one, it's not really about harmonics. Let's just see if you can pick up on the sound that this is making when you get it open. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Hey guys, Kev here. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, it, that's a technology we've never experienced. Let, let's try that again. Hey guys, Kev here. Now, admittedly, that might get a little bit annoying after a handful of times. Hey guys, Kev here. You'd think so, right? Just just hearing that, that, that grating sound that's just gonna permeate your eardrums and burrow its way like a like a bed bug, just deep, deep into. I don't know if bed bugs burrow into your ears. Whatever, just go with me here. Burrow, just burrowing deep into your brain, and it will never, ever, ever go away. Hey guys, Kev here. Now, of course, I kid. Uh, I'm not making fun of the knife in any way, or Kevin. Uh, he's a friend, and uh, I just think it's amusing as shit. Um, but don't let my uh, my attempts at comedy here uh, make you think in any way that I don't take the knife seriously, because I do. I've actually had a chance to play with this for a little over a week now, and I've really enjoyed the feeling of the knife. I'm going to give you some close-ups here in a minute, but I really just kind of want you to soak in the shape. It's like a giant Tylenol. No, um, I, I do like the rounded ends of this knife. I love the mostly straight body of this knife that has just a very slight hump and a very slight curvature. And what that does is it just fits right into your hand, no matter how you're holding it. It's a very, very comfortable design. And while it's easy to pick apart 
the paperclip style pocket clip that we're seeing here. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, you don't feel it. The, it, it creates zero hot spot in your hand. So if you're actually going to use this knife, and Kevin is known very well to be a user of his knives and of uh, females in general, from what I understand. I mean, look at the man. He's just, he's just, he's just a pure stud. Um, for someone that actually uses their knives, he's designing a knife, or co-designing, I should say, with Colin, a knife that is meant to be used, not just be pocket jewelry, not just be eye candy, and not just be a fun knife to, uh, to play around with. It's meant to actually be used. So by not having the hot spot, that really helps. Also, uh, being an inset tab lock design, it means it's something that lefties, and I, I don't do things lefty, so I apologize that that was slow, but lefties aren't applying pressure to a lock bar or anything else, and that was why they did the bolster lock on the stout. That way, lefties and righties uh, had equality. Equity, equity, equality. Equality is like the buzzword of 2022 or of the 2020s in general. And uh, Kevin uh, is is nothing if not but woke. Uh, he is a, a rather woke individual. Now let's talk about a couple of the changes that you're going to see from this prototype over to the standard knives. Then we're going to break down the specs and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the knife. Number one. You see the uh, atrocious plunge line that's been done here, where it kind of disappears behind the frame. It's not going to. It's going to stop just before the frame, right where the edge terminates. And it's. I think it actually even has a little bit of an angle, so it's going to follow the shape of the frame. So it's not going to disappear into the frame. Again, this is just a prototype, and prototypes are made so that you can see what changes need to be made. Um, the clip will be modified to accept lynch clips. This one is a little bit wide set, so it, it doesn't quite accept those replacement clips. For those of you who don't like the paperclip style uh, clips, you know, 98% <coughs> of the knife collecting community, uh, you will be able to uh, get a couple of different styles of replacement clips, and it's going to be modified to fit that just like the stout was. Let's see, what else here? Uh, there's going to be uh, more lock bar access. It will be easier to get into the lock bar, which honestly, I'm not having an issue whatsoever getting to that lock bar, but there is going to be a little bit more relief allowing you faster access to just swipe across instead of dropping your thumb all the way in. And uh, the production knives will be all T8 hardware, including the pivot. So you will only need one tool to take this apart and replace the bearings with skiff bearings. I only say that because it's just funny that no matter how great the knife is that Kev buys, uh, he will at some point take a knife apart and put skiff bearings in it just to see if it makes it any better. So uh, maybe you're going to do the same to his knife and see if it aggravates him. I don't know. Now, this is the reverse tuxedo variant, and we're going to talk about the different variants here in a moment. But on any versions that have the black DLC, it's actually a black wash, although it's not picking up very well on camera here. And that will be one of the changes. It's going to be tumbled longer, so you have more of that tumbled finish into the black to give you a bit more of a three-dimensional look to it. But everything else remains the same. This really great design. I love the, uh, the, 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 the grinds that come in right here at the very top of the knife. They look really good. The scallop on both sides. Uh, as you grip the knife, your finger falls into that scallop if you're holding back here. And just like the stout, they have done uh, this mid-placed finger choil here. So you don't have like a stump right here that's separating your fingers. They're not putting a finger choil all the way up here and then having a big hump right here with, with separation. You are able to choke up on the blade nicely and uh, do what you need to do. The drop off here on the blade uh, gives you wonderful access to control of the tip of the blade if you're doing a lot of tip cutting, which uh, Kev is one of those people. He likes to cut his shipping labels uh, with the the tip corner of a knife blade instead of using, I don't know, scissors like the rest of us. 
But again, for someone who's looking for that style of cutting, you're going to have that option. And there are going to be some pros and cons discussed here, so stay tuned for that. But right now, we are going to diggity diggity dig into the specs. Let's get in on it right about now. First off, this is an inset tab lock design, very similar to having a liner lock, except you do not have liners inside of that titanium frame there. Instead, there is a notch cutout and a lock built into a smaller area. And uh, it, for some people, you're going to love that. Some people, you're not even really going to care. It's not going to be a huge difference to you, but uh, it's kind of like minimalistic in its execution. Um, you have an overall length of seven and three quarter inches, blade length of 3.3 inches, handle length 4.2 inches, blade thickness uh, looks like 120 thousandths of an inch thick. So it's, uh, it is not terribly overbuilt. It's not a terribly thick blade stock, uh, but it's not thin and wimpy either. I think you're getting a really great balance of an EDC weight and feel and size. Uh, with still some great, tough, utilitarian kind of uh, usefulness built into that blade thickness. Uh, blade steel on these will be 20 CV. Everybody except for one uh, YouTube commenter troll will be perfectly happy with that because we all have experience with 20 CV and really have never been let down. And he is naming the blade shape on this the Buzz Cliff. And it really is a sheep's foot design, kind of a modified Warncliffe. And since it's called the Buzz, uh, Kev thought it would be uh, incredibly clever to name it the Buzzcliffe. You'll notice I am talking about Kevin a lot uh, and not so much about Colin. This really is Colin's design that uh, Kevin then added his two cents, made some modifications, uh, made some changes, brainstormed with Colin to create this. But it really is uh, Colin's brainchild. However, uh, I don't want to downplay uh, Kevin's importance in the development of this knife. And Kev is a great guy, and you need to be watching his content. Go over to his YouTube channel and subscribe, Lefty EDC. He's, a, he's got a really unique take on a lot of stuff. And... You know, he does deal with the practicalities of these knife designs that he collects, that he buys, that he reviews, and I think it's going to resonate well with a lot of the knife community. And he's a lot like the Charles Nelson Riley of the knife community. Just add a little flair and he's right there. <laughs> Younger viewers are probably going to have to Google that for the full effect of what I said. Now... The versions that you're going to be able to get and he's even made clever little names for them. we got the, the Silver Fox, which is going to be Stonewash Titanium Frame, Stonewash Blade. The, oh God, I, I really have to say this, don't I? Murdered out, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I said that. Please don't, don't make sound bites of that. Don't make that your ringtone. Blackwash Titanium with a Blackwash Blade. That is the one I'm going to be going for. I like the all blacked out look. That, for, for me, for this design, the Murdered Out, version is going to be the knife. Reverse tux, which is what this is. Black and white, baby. Yeah, yeah. He um, he didn't put a fancy name on that one. That is uh, the bee blasted titanium with a black wash blade. Oh, I'm sorry. It's reverse of this. Yeah, because this is the tux. Reverse tux is reverse, dear. So the, <laughs> the reverse tux will be the bead blasted titanium, so you're going to have that gray look of titanium, and the blade will be black washed. This is the tux, the black washed titanium with the satin blade. Not a fan of this one. Um, it looks good. It looks fine. I'm just not a huge fan of black handle and satin blade. Let's take a look at this and see how well built it was. First, let's start with the centering. Uh, that is as Kev would say, dead nuts, y'all. I don't, I don't, I do a terrible Kev impression. I'm not really sure that that did him justice, but uh, the action, it is quick. Not as quick as I was hoping for. It's got a little bit of friction, even for a weighty blade like this. Uh, it is extraordinarily smooth. I'm talking like Sabenza smooth, almost Rockstead smooth. It has that nearly hydraulic feeling. It is wonderfully smooth. 
but uh, I feel there's a little bit of added tension on the lock that is slowing down the action. Again, knives do not need to be drop shutty <clears throat> in order to exhibit a quality action. It's not what I'm saying. It's just not firing like a rocket. The stout, on the other hand, fires much, much faster. And that is not the fastest, you know, flicking knife that I have either. But there is a substantial difference between this prototype and that production knife. And for that, I, I, I would definitely want to say I hope that they're going to revise the action. I know they're revising the uh, detent strength because he wants the front flipping or top flipping, however you want to refer to it, and the flicking action, whether it be reverse flicking or check, check out what happens when you slow roll it. You ready for this? Hey guys, Kev here. Yeah, it just it just slows way down. And I believe you can thumb flick it. Let's see. No. Yeah. No, it's not a thumb flicker. Really, not at all. Reverse flicking, you got it made. And that is my preferred method on this knife. Uh, even though I am not a front flipper, this front flip variation, the way that they've done it, um... It's like Jared said on a recent video that he did in, in the live stream that we did when we were talking about uh, these knives. Um, it's, it's like flicking a lighter. You're, you're going to grab it at the top and you're going to flick it back. You're going to grab it at the top and flick it back. You're not grabbing from a front corner and then, hya! No, it's not like that. So I like that for the consistency. I believe it's also going to be fairly easy. No, not really. Again, when they get the detent dialed in on the production knives, I think it'll be easier to do that. You're just not going to be able to do that off the back side of your index finger flip because of the shape of it. But the action, uh, it, again, is nice. It's smooth. It's just not snappy and fast. I would like to see a lot less friction. I would like to see that thing just rocketing open. Again, the Stout is a fantastic example. And while I keep pulling this out... Let's give you a size comparison here between the Buzz and the Stout. Hey, guys! Yeah. So, uh, if you're drinking uh, a few pints of Stout, you're probably going to get a Buzz. See what I did there? See, I I'm terribly clever, too, just like Kevin. Um, so, you have a virtually identical overall length, a virtually identical blade length. However... You do have more cutting edge than you have on the stout. You're also going to have a little more belly. This is much more flat. It has a little bit, I mean, ever so slight curvature to it. Whereas this one, you've got a lot more rocking effect. So like you're cutting paracord and stuff, and you chop down on it, and you got to give it a quick little rock to get a clean cut. This is going to be much better for that. I really, 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 really like this blade shape a lot. This might be one of my favorite blade shapes I've seen come out all year. So I think that's going to make this extraordinarily popular. Uh, the frame is a bit beefy as far as its height as well as its thickness because you have... Unlike the Stout, which is, as you can very clearly see, it is slab-sided. It is completely flat. What you've got here on the Buzz is a little bit of a contoured frame. Now, they didn't go apeshit crazy on that and make it so rounded that it, it lost its feel. You still have a great, nice feel in the hand. It's quickly indexed right where it needs to go. It's not shifting around because it's too rounded. They did a great job in the radius that they chose for the frame. So good job on that. You'll also notice it is a nice deep hologram, baby. Now, for those that have seen the black versions, the black washed versions of the prototype, uh, they were done with such a shallow hollow grind that it almost comes off like a flat grind. The blades are actually going to be like this, a nice deep hollow grind, which I don't think I can focus on. Are you going to focus on there? You're not going to focus on there, you hunk of... No. How about if we do this? There we go. Now you get to see 
nice and deep. Oh. So overall, what are my thoughts? My thoughts are, I really think that this is going to be a popular design. I think they will most likely end up selling more units of this than they did of the Stout. But for my money, I really, 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 really need it to be as snappy, quick, and smooth as the Stout was. The way the prototype came in, it, it doesn't feel stiff. Again, please don't misunderstand me. And it's hard for me to really help you understand without you being here and touching it. Believe me, more than anything, I would really like you to touch it right now. Sounds like me on a first date every single time. Um, it has a really wonderful smoothness. So smooth I can't stop myself from going to lock. It is very, 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 very smooth but it has a good amount of friction to it that prevents it from being super fast. If I do the same thing here and I just give it one little shake, it just falls right open. And same thing for the closing. So again, uh, drop shutty is not an indication of quality, but the, the slickness, the reduced degree of friction that you will feel applied to that blade does make a difference. And I think for a knife like this that's going to be fidgety fun, it needs to have that. So uh, I'm very excited to see how the production knife comes out versus the prototype. I think the prototype, they did a great job. Let's give you some close-ups on this. We'll go back to the, uh, the, the close-up view here. Come on. Really, now you're not going to do it. Now you're not going to focus close-up. Uh, they're doing a really nice job on the belt satin. I think they could start going a little bit finer on their horizontal satin so it looks a little bit more like a hand rub satin. But it's uh, perfectly acceptable, looks good. All the beveling being done all the way around the frame is done very, very nicely. Again, they've done their flat-faced pivot. Nicely engraved. The scallop leading into the lock is great. They've got a nice bevel on the lock itself as well. There is your inset tab lock. It is deeply pocketed, but it needs more pockets. I'd be pocketing all the way back here. It needs to lose a little bit of weight. It really does. It's, it's a little tiny bit on the heavy side. We'll weigh it here in a second. Nice clean backspacer. I like the look of the jimping going around the tang of the blade as the blade is sitting there open. It looks really, really cool. I would have liked to have seen some jimping up here, be perfectly honest with you, uh, especially when you're choked up. I would have gone all the way to the uh, front of that window there, right where your thumb's going to drop, but that's just me. Nice clean look on the other side as well. And there you can see some of the stone washing effect. That is going to be a little bit heavier on the production model, so that'll be a bit more accentuated. That will also accentuate all of the beveled lines a little bit more as well. So I think that I think that overall it is a wonderfully, wonderfully handsome knife, and I'm pretty damn excited about it. Like I said, I'm going to go for the all black version. I don't know what you guys are going to do, but uh, I think the all black is great. Oh, just. It's a nice, solid feel in the hand. I would have no problem at all doing all kinds of different cutting with this knife. It's really comfortable as you reach up here. Again, especially because that finger choil, my, my fingers aren't pinching onto the heel of the edge. I can just kind of grab it right here and zip, like a little laser. All right, so that's my thoughts on it. Again, the uh, pre-order date will be October 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern. This is the Devo, Knife, Devo Knives Buzz, made by Best Tech Knives. I hope you guys enjoy your knife. Uh, I think that everybody watching is going to absolutely love this thing when it comes in. I'm very excited for everybody. I'm very excited for Kevin Collin. Congratulations, guys. You've made another really fantastic knife. Let's get the weight out of the way. Then we are going to just hop on out of here. Hey, guys. Kev here. 4.3 ounces versus the Stout at 4.1. Very, very, very similar in its overall weight. If it were me, I'd love to see it going under 4 ounces. I'd love to see 3.6, 3.7 um, pocketing deeper into the back into the rear section of the titanium. 
should get that right below four ounces. So let's uh, let's hope for that. But uh, overall, I think it's a great design. Very comfortable in the hand. It's got that fun flickability to it, and it just rocks. And of course, we all love the sound effects. Oh yeah, baby. I'm out of here for now, and I'll catch you on the next video.